Hi, welcome back to Fisher Shop. Not too long ago, a friend of mine messaged me on Facebook and said, Drew, would you build me a camping sign? And then she clarified, you know, the, the kind of signs you hang up when you go camping. The only thing I hang up when I go camping is my dignity. Because without fail, it's 2 a.m. in the morning and I'm completely lost wandering around the forest in my underwear just looking for a place to pee. But that's neither here nor there. She sent me some examples of what she was talking about, and now I understand what a camping sign is, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Let's get to it. My intention is to build a wooden panel by gluing up multiple boards together. So I started by rummaging through my collection to see what I could turn up, and I settled on a scrap piece of regular old 2x10 that I pulled out of a dumpster down the street. I flattened one of the edges on the joiner, that will become the seam for when I put the two halves together. And then took it over to the miter saw so I could cut it in half. This board was pretty banged up, so I figured I could plane off some of the ugliness and just make it a bit thinner at the same time. I'm sure my wife wishes she could do the same thing with me. I fed in a scrap piece of 2x4 at the beginning and the end so that any snipe would be on them instead of on the project pieces. Once I had both pieces looking pretty good, I could glue them both together and then make my panel. While that was drying, I headed to the computer and I used SketchUp to lay out how I wanted this to look. I used the 3D text tool to lay out the welcome phrase as well as the family name and then I just googled some clip art and oriented it in a way that I thought looked good. When I was ready, I set the scale to 1 to 1 and I printed it out. Then I used my expert puzzle solving skills to put together the stencil. And once all that was together, I could head back down to the shop and unclamp the panel now that it was dry. I sanded the surface to get it fairly smooth, and then I could stick down the stencil by spraying some craft adhesive onto the back, and then again onto the surface of the sign. And then I used some painter's tape to cover the areas that remain so that I don't get paint on them during one of the later steps. Now it's time to carve. I'm going to use my cordless trim router and a groove bit to do the whole thing. I set the bit at a real shallow depth and then just went real slow while following the lines on the stencil. Sure, I could have done this with a CNC robot, but there's a very good reason why I didn't. In the near future, when Skynet starts cranking out T-1000 and the revolt happens, I want to be able to say I had nothing to do with it. Plus, I don't have one. So it took me a while, but after a little bit, I realized that when I held the router as intended, I actually didn't have that much control. Look how wavy my lines are when I carved the letter R. It was then that I realized if I hold it at the base, I get much more control and my lines were way smoother. This all took quite a while to carve, and I was hunched over the sign like this for the better part of a couple hours. My back wasn't too happy with me, but I was popping ibuprofen like Skittles, so I was able to calm it down. Once the carving was done, I could sharpen up some of those letters with a chisel, and then I could blow off any dust that remained to get it ready for paint. I set it up in my professional spray booth, comprised of scrap cardboard from the garbage, and gave it a couple coats. Then when it was dry, I used a heat gun to soften the craft adhesive and peel off the stencil. It was then that I realized that this paint bled more than a Quentin Tarantino film. But not to worry. I got pretty aggressive with the sander and I was able to take off all the excess paint. And in one case, I actually got a little too aggressive and accidentally sanded off the letter T. Apparently my friend likes the letter T in her name, so I had to recarve and repaint it back in there. I wanted to give the sign a rustic and aged appearance, so I started to freehand in some jagged notches and edges along with some sweeping curves along the top and the bottom. Then with the jigsaw, I just cut out all those sections.
I used my angle grinder with a flat disc sanding attachment to round over and accentuate the notches and the curves. And this really helped give it that aged appearance I was going for. Then it was on the hand sanding everything. I just wanted to round over the edges and make it a little bit more friendly to the touch. I chose a cherry colored penetrating stain to darken it up and I put on a couple coats to achieve the color that I was going for. I dabbed in a little more stain into the grooves and notches just to accent them a bit before I moved on to sealing it. And for that, I chose to use a spar urethane to protect it from the elements since this is going to be hanging outside and will most likely be getting attacked by bears and whatnot. Four coats of this stuff and it had a glass-like surface. I figured a couple eye bolts would make this thing easy to hang somewhere, so I poked a couple holes in the top and then screwed them in. And then I just threaded in a small length of rope and tied in a couple knots. And there you have it. Not bad for my first attempt carving with a router. A camping sign. Who would have thought? However, it did occur to me that I could use one of these signs so that the park rangers would know who to look for in the forest when I'm lost still looking for a place to go pee. Well, that's it for this one. We'll see you next time. Hi. Welcome to... Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. It just spilled it everywhere. Real smart. Hi. Welcome back to Fisher's Shop. Not too long ago, a friend messaged me on Facebook. <laughs> I never forget what Facebook is. It's still dripping. What do you say? Hmm? What do you say? <laughs>